This is Twit. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Provide more support for MSP teams by keeping their skills up to date in all aspects of IT, including MS Cloud, AWS, CompTIA, and so much more. Twit listeners will receive at least 20% off or as much as 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. The discount is based on the size of your team when you fill out their form. So I think you kind of answered, partially answered my next question. <laughs> which is, you know, everybody's really excited about how AI plays into everything now, right? AI is the conversation. It's kind of taking over every conversation there is about technology, um, especially when you're talking about ena enabling less technical users to do things, to create things, to create very complex things or things that would have been incredibly time intensive or or um, difficult in the past. And, and, and I'm really interested in, the, in that angle and how and but also how you see, you know, again, that the, the Openness in AI is a bit of a challenge, which we could go. I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but um, you know, how do you see those two things? Um, you know, the open the 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 spatial platforms that you're working on and AI really f working together. Yeah. But even even before you get to the point where you know the end user can create a fantastical environment with which to interact, even before that, even you know for developers yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, and you do mention some of the. Uh, challenges we're all hearing about in AI, which I absolutely agree with. Uh, probably the only time in my career I've actually raised alarms is around, you know, the emerging uh, conversational AIs like ChatGPT. Um, AI is a big field. Uh, it is a lot more than just conversational AI in these large la language models. Um, I prefer to call it machine learning as opposed to AI. AI, I, yeah. I think, should be reserved for you know, the, the time when it gets closer to sentient, ChatGPT arguably is actually getting close to something that genuinely is more in the AI camp as opposed to the machine learning camp. Um, but just to give you an idea of the landscape, the landscape is so broad. I, I mean, a lot of us are using AI already and don't even realize it. You know, open CV um, to just to, to understand objects in a scene. Um, AI is being used to learn how to make sure you know how something is aligned with the real world um, with a decent amount of accuracy. Uh, I, you know, there's it's already being used a lot in these emerging technologies because we now have eyes that are looking at what you're looking at and can and can even do things like uh detect whether something has a crack on it and know whether like something going down the assembly line was properly assembled or or in, in some way has a flaw and so those are all ways in which it's being used that don't touch upon some of the the, the genuine challenges of of these you know conversational large language model ais um the other interesting area that's emerging which is an alternative to three-dimensional meshes is nerfs um the, the nerfs are basically an ai way of creating the stereoscopic renderings of a scene based on photography you take a bunch of photos you you create a machine learning model of those photos and then from any angle it knows how to deliver the correct stereoscopic screens and we're as uh the, the 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 two screens that you see in your device and um so that opens up all kinds of possibilities for using machine learning to quickly take a scene that like let's just imagine a real estate agent taking photos of a of a house um now you can use nerfs to very efficiently render that um to to a person for things like a walkthrough um and i mean there's just so many other areas that are using ai already the one is um yeah, there, there you go for those of you i forgot what the uh, acronym stood for so i was, I was going to rattle it off but i forgot the it's, it's it's not exactly an easy thing to rattle off your tongue neural radiance field um the other um, areas that are behind the scenes are things like we now know where you're looking and you know there's the whole creepy parts of that but there's also the just you're looking at this thing and you're supposed to be pushing that and you're not pushing it now i know to tell you by the way push the red button <laughs> you know there's ways for it to just know what you're doing and even what you're potentially emoting and helping you helping you navigate a situation um maybe it sees you being an expert because you're moving faster than a typical person it's seen going through a training exercise and it knows to accelerate it and adaptively uh, matches your pacing of, of how fast you're how fast of a learner you are or, or how slow of a learner you are and and those are all ways in which machine learning can can make all of these experiences better and, and nicely a lot of them never will touch on the the, the genuinely concerning uh, areas of you know hallucinations and it not mm -hmm. even 
it not even knowing whether what it told you is factual or not or just made up or you know approximately true but <laughs> but only probabilistically true not actually true uh you know those are some of the existing challenges around conversational ai mm-hmm.